Hey, how's it going guys? This is my truth about air gun scope video. Hope you like it. Alright, first things first. What makes a scope an air gun scope? Uh, in my personal opinion, it's a scope that will focus down to about uh, 25 yards or less. And ideally, it's a scope that has um, repeatable turrets, it has an adjustable objective, and if possible, a crosshair that has reference points in it because of the real steep trajectory of an air rifle. So you have different reference points for the different distances. And in my mind, that makes a scope a good air gun scope. One of the things air gunners have to watch for when you're buying a scope is, it's a real small market and because of that the manufacturers don't exactly cater to us. So when you're going to look for a scope that will focus down to 25 yards or 10 yards or even less, there's just not a huge selection, especially in the really high end type scopes. So because of that, there's a real good chance of getting gouged and a lot of the scope companies, they'll cater to the air gunners but the quality's not there. The features are there, but the quality's not there. That's something we're about to cover. Something really worthwhile to watch for on air gun scopes are useless features. And here's a few of the features that come to mind for me. Okay, something that gets a lot of air time on the air gun forums and a lot of the YouTube channels are lockable turrets. But in all actuality, most guns like this that have target type turrets, the turrets are really hard to turn. I mean, not hard to turn, but they're hard for them to slip. So they're very positive, they click and stop. So the lockable turrets, a lot of times, it's a feature that you're paying a lot for when you may not actually need it. Okay, another feature that you're probably overpaying for are illuminated rectangles. That's another one of these things that sounds great in theory, but in practice, if you're out shooting and it's dusky dark and you're trying to shoot at something, a lot of times the illuminated rectangle will actually blind you so you can't see the target. A lot like when a police officer holds a flashlight like this, you can't see him, all you can see into is the light. Something else that never gets discussed on these illuminated crosshairs, especially on cheaper scopes, is the fact that it only illuminates from one direction. So this part of the crosshair will be a lot brighter than this part. It fades. Um, a lot of times it doesn't really work as much as you think it would. A lot of times going out, it's one of those features that's neat to show somebody, but when the battery goes dead and you realize the black crosshair works just as well, you never replace the battery. The only thing more useless than the illuminated rectangle is one that comes with 36 colors. I cannot imagine something being more useless than that. Another thing to be aware of is too complicated a crosshair. Mill dots are great. Uh, my favorite particular crosshair that has reference points is the SWFA Mill Quad. It's not very busy, but it gives you plenty of reference points. But when you start looking at a crosshair that has more reference points than a big thorny bush, after a while it just becomes visual clutter. And it's kind of like looking through a screen door in a television. After a while it becomes a little irritating. So if you don't need it, don't buy it. Get something that has some a uh, few reference points, mill dot, mill quad, ballistic mill dot, will cover 99% of the shooters out there. Okay, paying for too much magnification. If you're the, like me and you normally shoot with your scope on say 10 to 12 power and you have the choice of buying say a 4 to 12 scope or an 8 to 32, get the 4 to 12. The lenses don't have to bend the light as much. There's a lot less distortion. They're a lot brighter. The image is going to be crisper and I think you'll enjoy it a lot more. If you go to a sporting goods store on any line of scope, pick up a high magnification, whether it's a Bushnell, Savorsky, it doesn't matter. Pick up a scope on the lower end of the magnification, say 2 to 7, 3 to 9, 4 to 12. Look at the exact same scope on 6 to 24, 8 to 32, 10 to 40, and you'll notice that the image gets darker and it also gets grainier. 
Uh, very few times do you need 32 power magnification to shoot 25 or 30 yards. Oversized objectives. When you take two scopes, one like this one is a 40 millimeter, and you take the exact same scope and put a 56 millimeter lens on it, it will indeed be brighter. The thing is, if you buy a $118 scope that's a 30 millimeter that has a 56 millimeter end on it, lockable turrets, it lights up, it comes with all this stuff, you've got a piece of junk with a lot of neat features. The thing is, if something has an oversized objective, there's a couple of problems. One is, it moves the scope higher. To be able to clear the, the barreled action, you're going to have to mount it higher. There's a lot of problems with mounting it higher than necessary. Uh, the other thing is, is the quality. If it's a 56 millimeter European scope, by all means, you've got something that is spooky badass. But if it's a 56 millimeter no-name scope, you don't have anything. Good quality glass, good construction, always trumps a large objective. It's just the way it is. You cannot get a 56 millimeter junk scope to be as clear as a 40 millimeter quality scope. If you doubt that, look through sometime a Leopold 3 to 9 EFR. It has a 33 millimeter. They are unbelievably bright because they're short, they're low power, and they're quality glass. Okay, one of the other things to watch for are the so-called freebies that come with a lot of air gun scopes. If your scope comes with a flashlight, a compass, a laser pointer, it comes with a cheap set of weaver rings, flip up Butler Creek, scope caps, if it comes in a big aluminum box that looks like a small suitcase, that stuff is not free, you're paying for it. So if you think you're paying $200 for a scope with $75 worth of extras, you're not. You're buying a $125 scope and you're still paying for all the extras. You're not getting any of that stuff for free. And a lot of the stuff that they tell you is free that comes with a scope. They're cheap anyway, you wouldn't buy it anyway. Seriously, would you use your own money to buy an aluminum folding case to put your scope in? You mount the scope to the gun, you never take it back off. I've got a drawer full of Butler Creek flip-up scope caps. They're useless. I, they're, they're totally useless. I need something to cover my front scope cap when I stand the gun up in the closet. That's it. I'm not going to be taking my thumb and touching the end of my lens. That's a useless feature. I don't need it. I've got enough pocket knives. I've got enough multi-tools that come with some scopes. I don't need any of that stuff. If I pay $300 for a scope, I want a good quality scope. And I want to know my $300 went on to the scope, not for a bunch of useless stuff that I didn't ask for. Okay, 30 millimeter or one inch tube, that's kind of an interesting topic. On the 30 millimeter tube, it actually is larger diameter, obviously, and you have two choices with it, or the manufacturer has two choices. One, you can use significantly larger lenses that will allow more light and a better picture through. Or the cheaper thing to do is to sell it as something that has more internal travel. And it does. A 30 millimeter tube almost 99% of the time will have more internal travel. The thing they don't ever talk about is the further you get that lens out of center, the more distortion you're going to get, the more halos, the worse it's going to get. You want your scope as close to optically centered as perfect. So knowing you got a 100 mm way of travel, it's meaningless. If your scope, once you mount it on the gun, is shooting severely low, put a drooper mount on it. Try to get it as close to optically centered as perfect. The other thing is, think about it from a scope manufacturer's point of view. Both scopes being identical, if one's a 1 inch and one's a 30 millimeter, they probably have another dollar worth of material in the 30 millimeter too. The damn thing's not that long, so it can't be that expensive. It's a piece of extruded aluminum. Where they're getting the scope buyers is the extra travel. That's great. So what they end up doing was putting two longer springs and two longer screws about that damn far, and they're going to charge you $100 for it. Don't fall for that. 
if the lenses are better in a one inch scope, it's going to be better than a 30 millimeter scope, period. It's just the way it is. Okay, another hotbed topic are the Springer rated scopes. Uh, let me do Springer rated like this with huge quotation marks because that's something that's way oversold. There are basically a few scopes that are actually made to stand the double recoil of a Springer. A couple that come to mind are the Clear Ridge RM, the Leopold 3 to 9 EFR, and the SWFA fixed powers. They have structures on both sides of the rector assembly so they can handle the double recoil. The rest of the scopes out there, except for maybe a few that I can't think of right offhand, are just cheap scopes. So if you put a $60 center point on your gun and you tear it up and you take it back to Walmart and get another $60 center point, no big deal. They've got about $11 in that scope. So even if they replace it a couple of times, they're still making money. And 99% of the time, you're going to lose the receipt, you're going to lose the box. You're not going to be able to remember where all that stuff is. You're just going to chunk in the trash and go buy another one. Do yourself a favor. If you have a Magnum Springer and you know that it's a gun that is known for trashing scopes, when you buy the scope, keep the receipt, the box. If you buy it from somewhere online and they ship it to you, keep the shipping container, keep everything related to the scope. Almost any decent vendor will refund your money if there's a problem. But if you don't have your original receipt, they're not going to do anything. They're, you know, all they can do is sell you a new one. So, like I say, do yourself a favor and keep up with that stuff. Okay, first focal plane versus second focal plane. If you look it up on YouTube, you'll get a real quick understanding of what this means if you don't already know. Uh, just my personal opinion, a lot of times they really gouge you for the fact that it has first focal plane. It's not that big a deal in the construction of the scope, but they really put it to you if you didn't insist on having that. It's a lot like a lot of the scope makers, say they make a $200 scope with a duplex, but if you buy the same scope with a mill dot, it's an extra 80 or 90 or or $100. Really, it's not that big a deal to make it into a mill dot. They're just gouging you on it. So, like I say, it's something to think about. Most of the scopes out there are second focal plane. It's what you normally see when you go to the sporting goods stores. But before you buy focal, uh, first focal plane, look at it. Make sure it's what you really want because odds are you're going to pay quite a bit extra to get it. The last thing I wanted to touch on is where to do some research. Uh, if you're going on YouTube, uh, Google the scopes, go to Amazon, go to eBay, uh, Optics Planet, anywhere like that. They'll have ratings and reviews, and these are generally honest reviews. Go on there, read about the scope before you spend a bunch of money on it. There's no one I know that has pissed off more money on sub $500 scopes than I have. And believe me, it kills me when I buy a $300 scope, get it home, put it on my gun, and it won't track, or it won't hold zero, or the lenses are for shit. It sucks, and it's not something you want to go through if you can help it. There's a lot of good scopes out there, but for every good one, there's a piece of junk waiting to take your money away from you. So be very careful with that. Alright guys, I hope it didn't bum anybody out. I was just trying to be very real about what's awaiting you when you get ready to buy an air gun scope. Uh, it's a minefield and you can really piss off a bunch of money in a freaking hurry. So, like I say, uh, just do your research, use your head, ask questions, go to shoots, uh, go to the air gun forums, ask some of the guys before you buy a $400 scope and you're not sure if you're even going to like it, ask around. Put a post on there. Has anybody used fill-in-the-blank brand scope? If so, how do you like it? Would you buy it again? It's a lot better than getting a $400 scope and then browsing the form and waiting for the next guy to ask so that you can tell him what a piece of junk it is. <laughs> anyway, guys, I really appreciate you watching my videos. And if you don't mind, like and subscribe. And I've got some more coming. Thank you.